Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jeremy. I'm Kelly. And this is our Grand Design Trans N 247BH. We have four boys and we travel full time. The Trans N comes with two 20 pound propane tanks. It's basically the same thing that you have if you have a barbecue grill. So you have the opportunity to get these filled up or you can exchange them if you're in a pinch. This is one thing that we are gonna upgrade. I haven't fully decided if I'm gonna jump up to the two 30 pounders or to two 40 pounders. It also comes with one 12 volt battery. Uh, this is a lead acid battery. Uh, if you've watched any of our other stuff, you know that uh, we're big fans of Battleborn and uh, we're waiting uh, for all the components so we can get that system set up and then that battery box will disappear and our trailer will be fully built to be Never had to plug in unless we choose to. On the trailer, there is a pass-through. It goes through both sides. It is actually very large. It has lights in here, which is nice. And it goes all the way through, so it's it's pretty big. Sorry it's not organized right now. We literally just got this trailer about five days ago, and uh, we've been focusing on the inside. We'll get there. <laughs> so on this, we do have the awning, the powered awning that is new for us. Our plan is to switch this out for the more ride, just the handle that comes out and slides in. We're also planning to replace this with the RV door lock, um, the one that has the key and the fob and the buttons. That way we don't always have to carry a key around with us. We're also planning to change out this window. We're gonna, we want to put clear glass in here with the shade. So these are 3,500 pound axles each. So it's a total of 7,000 pounds for the trailer. Um, the trailer got taken across the cat scale. We are at 6,000 and that's no water in there. And it's, um, so we have plenty of room. That's with all of our stuff in there. We're only sitting at 6,000. The tires are used and they are West Lakes. So I'm keeping a very close eye on them every time before we drive i'm checking temperature and pressure and then during the drive we check them a couple times as well we will be trading these out i haven't fully decided on what tires we should move to i do know that i'm not going to do load range d i am going to jump up at least to ease i know you guys are probably know a lot more about the tires than i do at this point i'm just starting my research but tell me what tires you guys like what you guys use um and i'll check those out as well so there is a uh, a tv like a cat v cable that goes in here this is an outside gfci outlet we'll probably use this for our bug light if we're going to be out here we'll probably use it for our bug light or use this to run a cable to our tow vehicle to uh, plug in the engine block heater when we're out in the middle of nowhere we'll just be able to run a cable from this to our engine block heater on the truck and not have to worry about it at all this is our gravity fill water this is our hot water heater right now it is a tank we are going to switch it to a tankless these lights down here are just the bulbs at the very least i'm going to put replace these with some leds but more than likely i'm going to get the big red strips that go all the way up the side and light up just that way we're more visible more visibility in your rv is never a bad thing so i'll at least get some uh strips that come down here for the brake and the lights and the turn signals that way we're just more visible but i am going to do the leds down here as well this is just your standard 30 rv port the ladder that goes up onto the roof it is a walkable roof and i have been up there twice once to look around and make sure there are no leaks and the second time measuring and we can actually get 1620 watts worth of solar panels on the roof which is perfect because we're getting 810 amp hours of Battleborn heated lithium in the GC3s. So it's recommended to have at least double what your amp hours are. So we're on the low side and we're thinking of solutions to get a little bit higher. We'll see how that works. So we do have stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Uh, they actually take quite a bit of movement out of the RV. Very, very happy with those. Uh, it comes with a manual handle. Um, never used it. I quickly... I quickly move to a 19 inch socket on the end of my drill and it takes literally seconds to stabilize the RV super fast and it's worth it. Under here is gray tank number one and black tank. We actually have the Valterra slides on here already. So I have a, a slide for the gray and a slide for the black and one hose there. And so when, when we go to clean out our tanks, I run the black first and then I close the black, I use the black spray port to spray out the tank 
and then I'll flush it the hose out with the gray. So this is the vent for the range that's over the stove. It works very well. Um, it is very loud, but it works very well. You'll see that when we go inside. This is the outlet for our furnace. This is also a gray tank. This is gray tank number two on the panel. This is actually the galley tank. This is just the kitchen sink. It's nice having two gray tanks. One for the rear bathroom, which is the shower and the sink and one for the kitchen sink. This is the other side of the pass-through. This is where I keep my black water hose for now. I am gonna be able to put that underneath the rig. I'll show you guys that modification soon. One thing that's really nice is this has a dedicated place for the hose to go through the bottom of the RV and it's got the little brushes in there. So my water hose actually goes underneath and plugs in right here and I can keep this door closed. Basically, it's just city water city water if you're hooked up to a pedestal and then fresh water fill if you're just filling the tank to use your 12 volt pump on the inside satellite and cable in here this is my battery disconnect and then i have another gfci outlet here also if you look under here it comes standard with a furion 25 amp solar charger it is an mppt which is very nice However, that is going to be replaced when we move to our Battleborn and Victron electronics system. That whole system is going to be in the nose. Right inside the door is our control panel. We have the battery, the fresh water, the black, the gray one, which is the rear, and the gray two, which is the galley. Ceiling lights, exterior lights, water pump, which we leave on because we don't do the city connection. And this is where we choose gas or electric for the water heater. We're plugged in so we run electric. And this is our awning control, so we can push the awning in or out. So this is our bedroom. Jeremy and I are in here. We just moved in. Uh, we've only had the rig for about, uh, what, five to six days, somewhere around there. We keep our clothing right now up here. We have a Bluetooth speaker up here that connects to our projector, which we have actually had for years and it works out perfectly. This wall over here is almost completely filled with the screen and it's perfect. These cabinets are a mess right now. Right now I have all of our coats and sweatshirts and raincoats and that type of stuff are in here. Down here is a huge open space that goes all the way back so it's kind of like a black hole. Long story short, we are looking for ways to organize this whole dresser space for ourselves and then right here it's just a vent i will be replacing these and the other two that are in the rig with some max air fans and then we will get the covers so that we can leave them open and running if we want to and then this is your 12 volt and 120 ac right here in the bedroom super easy to get access to there's storage under the bed it does not go all the way back like in some of the bigger rvs but it is still a decent size and as you can see we don't have a lot of stuff under there there's a 12 there's a ac outlet over here over here on this side you get an ac outlet and two 12 volt usb plugs so this rig comes with two of these uh what do they call them fighting octopus hooks and uh we are wonder we're considering whether or not we're going to add another one or if we're just going to remove these and put one of the ones of the the wooden bars that have the different hooks on it. This is our entryway. Um, I like that there's a countertop here. Uh, it helps for food prep. There are two drawers and four cubbies. We use the four bottom ones for shoes. And then right now this is miscellaneous stuff up here. So if you've been following along, having an indoor kitchen has been a game changer for us. We are thankful to be moving to a three burner stove as well as a small oven. Up here is where we are keeping all of our pantry items. So I love our sink. It's a big, huge trough sink. We have a retractable faucet that can be a sprayer as well. That's awesome. I love being able to have moved to this. The only downside of this is that it is a much bigger sink than what I'm used to. So when I do dishes, I'm using a whole lot more water than I was. Um, so we are looking to get two tubs 
that can go in here, one for the soapy water and one for the rinse water. This is also our thermostat. This does heat, cool, fan, and uh, dry for when we're off grid. And it does all in one. We did make one modification, as everybody that has these does. And you pull the sensor out through here, and it actually reads correctly now. The fridge here is nice. We have a freezer now, and uh, I'm already utilizing it. Of course, you have to have the ice cream. And the bacon. And the bacon. Um, so that has been nice to have. And then our refrigerator, this is, what did we say? It was about one and a half times the size of our last refrigerator um, space just for the fridge. And then it's about half the space of what our last one was for the freezer alone. So we're doubling our refrigerated freezer storage from what we used to have, which has been wonderful. Our cabinets. This is dry food storage. This has kind of just been my miscellaneous cleaning supplies. So we have installed a water filter. Jeremy will share that with you in a later video. Underneath the oven has a huge drawer. This is where I'm keeping all my pots and pans and baking materials. And then underneath the fridge is a huge cavernous space and that's where I keep my bin that I had in Blaze, as well as um, potatoes and apples and things that are good to be um, cold storage down there. This is the pet food drawer that, or that's what they call it. Right now I'm using it to hold my Coleman oven that we had in Blaze, and then I keep my extra dishcloths down here right now. So this TV is a smart 32 inch TV. It's a Roku. Um, there are cabinets on either side. Right now they're empty, other than a few toys. <laughs> yep. And then our previous owners of this rig left us a Blu-ray player and then the Furion radio system. The booth dinette is capable of dropping down into a bed. Um, we have not done that yet because the boys have been choosing to sleep in the bunks, which I'll show you shortly. Um, underneath the booth dinette seats, there are lots of stuff. There are drawers that I've got all the boys clothing in. So this is two of the boys and then the other drawer has two boys. Um, I would like to eventually turn the doors that are underneath the couch into drawers so that we can have, excuse me, Joshua. So, cause these are just pop down drawer doors and it's a big cavernous space under there and we don't keep anything right now except for the boys sleeping bags that they were using in the tent um, in there. So pretty much this is open space for us. We haven't put anything in there. And my goal is to make these two doors into drawers so that each boy has their own storage for clothing. In the living room space, we have three overhead cabinets. Right now, this is where I'm keeping the boys pajamas because I don't have room in the drawers until we have separated the boys out into their own drawers. I'm keeping the extra bread up here because it's not condensating like it was over there in this cabinet. And then in this one over here, we keep our games bag up here. If you are looking for a way to store lots and lots of games in one place in a small space, I definitely recommend this. Um, it is in our Amazon links on, in the description below if you are interested in that. This couch is a fold over couch. You can demonstrate, sure. Um, and this rolls out into a bed as well. Um, one of the things we liked about this floor model was it allowed us to have four beds if we were to choose to do that. Um, that way each of the boys could have their own bed if they were to choose to. Of course, we would have to change this bed and this bed and do it, make it daily. But if that's something that they would choose to want, then we can do that. We love that the couch faces the TV. Um, we can get all four boys sitting on this couch or Jeremy and I can sit here while the boys hang out up on their beds. If we angle the couch, the TV does swivel out. So we can angle it towards the boys' beds at night if they want to watch from bed. There's an outlet here by the couch if we need to plug stuff in. There's also one by the front door over by the bar. 
And then there's another one here and one right here. Yep, like Johnny said, there's another one here and then another set of USB plugs over here. Yeah. So this is how the boys have chosen to sleep so far. It's basically a full XL. It's slightly a little bit, it's a little bit shorter than a full XL. So they each have their own light in the bunks. The one on the bottom bunk is on the wall. The one on the top bunk is on the ceiling. They each have their own windows. And then underneath we have quite a bit of storage all the way around and back. It's the same size as the beds underneath minus the water heater that comes in. Uh, there's tons of space under there. So this is our bathroom. It is tiny, but it is perfect for us. It comes with a medicine cabinet, which actually holds a decent amount of stuff. The faucet we will be changing out for a taller one, just so that we can get underneath and into that bowl a little easier. And then it does have under cabinet storage, which is mostly empty. Our shower, we have used it. It works perfectly for everybody, um, especially because it has a wand, um, which makes it amazing for showering little people. We have our extra water jugs in here. Right now they are in the shower because the last few days have been below freezing all day long, um, during the day and overnight. So having the, water hoses and filters inside so that they didn't get destroyed in the freeze. So when we first got the trailer, we picked it up and it was winterized because it was well below freezing. And so they had winterized the RV. So what we did is when we got down here to Texas and the temperature went above freezing for a couple of days, we quickly dewinterized the rig. Our good friend Gabriel works for clean tech. I believe he's clean tech number three on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we asked him uh, what we need to be doing for the gray and the black tanks because a lot of people don't think about the gray tanks, but it's actually a big deal. So he gave us a special solution that we put in. We put half a cup in the black tank and half a cup in each of the two gray tanks. And we have had no issues whatsoever um, with any of the tanks with that solution. And yeah, we'll, we'll leave his contact information on the screen too so you guys can grab that and talk to him about any tank issues you're having or if you want your tanks clean, that's what he does. I hope you enjoyed our rig tour. We're looking forward to making some of these changes and upgrades. It already feels amazing to us. We are in love with this trailer. We definitely go by the live in it for a little while and figure out what you really do need um, before you purchase and before you make modifications. Any of the modification or upgrade that we do we will shoot that video for you or even do shorts for you so keep an eye out for those leave us a comment we love interacting with you guys on to the next adventure